Corey Hamm will make his NASCAR Truck Series debut for Kyle Busch Motorsports at Darlington. Jennifer Jo Cobb is not approved by NASCAR to make her NASCAR Cup Series debut after all. And the ratings for Richmond have finally come out. What's going, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. we got a lot of NASCAR stories to discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's start off with all the paint scheme announcements and all the throwback paint schemes announcements and sponsor announcements as well. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's start off with Kevin Harvick's 2021 Bush Dog Brew Scheme that we are going to see this weekend here at Talladega Super Speedway. Once again, the creativity from Bush is unreal. This paint scheme is really, really, really awesome. I love the colors of it a lot, and it's going to be an awesome paint scheme that we will see this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway. Hoping for some good luck for Kevin Harvick. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is another Kevin Hart paint scheme as he has the 2021 Bush Life for the Farmer scheme that we will see at the Bushy Mitch Bush Race at Kansas Speedway. Once again, this paint scheme is similar to last year's paint scheme, but I like the scheme a lot. I really do. It's a really awesome paint scheme, and I cannot wait to see it out on the racetrack for the Cup Series race at Kansas Speedway. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Ty Dillon's 2021 Mobile One scheme that we will see this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway in the NASCAR Spinny Series. I, at the beginning, of, I really was not a fan of this paint scheme, but this game has grown on me a little bit. It gives me a little bit of vibes to the Ryan Newman scheme. There's things that I definitely would definitely fix on this paint scheme, that's for sure. I really don't like the Ryan Newman number on the top of the car, but if they would fix some things and adjust some things on this car, this game would look really, really awesome. It's not a bad scheme overall. I like it more than I originally did. But yeah, that will, they will have a scheme at Talladega and Tyler Dillon's final star in the NASCAR Spinny Series. For this year, Joe Gibbs Racing, hopefully he'll have some good luck here at Talladega Super Speedway. The next paint scheme and sponsor news we're going to talk about is Chris Buescher, as he will have Auto Tempest on his car for two races, Roush Fenway Racing on the number 17 car, as they have become official partner. They will be on the car for Kansas and Circuit of the Americas. In my opinion, it's really cool that Auto Tempest is coming up and stepping up to the plate and sponsor Chris Buescher. They have been coming out and sponsoring Roush. Roush seems like to be a, a sponsor magnet over the last couple years. This is an awesome paint scheme, and hopefully this will give them some luck here and continue a good season that Chris Buescher has had overall at Roush Fenway Racing so far this season. The next paint scheme and positives we're going to take a look at is Eric Jones' 2021 U.S. Air Force recruiting scheme that we will see this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway, as this is honor and tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen. This is an awesome, awesome paint scheme. This scheme looks really, really, really cool. And a lot of people like myself have really liked a lot of the Richard Penning Motorsports schemes this year. This one is no exception. This is really, really cool. And I think it will look really, really cool, especially if he can maybe go to Victory Lane at Talladega Super Speedway. This paint scheme looks really, really awesome. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is the first throwback scheme. We're going to be taking a look at is Kyle Busch's 2020 M&M's 80th anniversary throwback scheme that we will see at the Darlington throwback race. Honestly, this paint scheme looks really, really good in my opinion, but I really would not consider a throwback. I think they're throwing this back to like the 2016 scheme when Kyle Busch had the black number on the car and like the all yellow on the car, brownish yellow color, and a mixture of the 2017 paint scheme as well. I wouldn't really consider, consider this a throwback. They could have done something more special with this, but overall, I do like it a lot as well. It looks really cool, and hopefully it will do very, very well and will give Kyle Busch some luck going forward here at the Darlington throwback race. The next paint scheme we're going to take a look at is another throwback. We're going to be taking a look at Alex Bowman's 2021 Darlington throwback scheme that, like I said, we'll see at Darlington Raceway. This is a throwback and a tribute to Alex Bowman's crew chief, Greg Ives, which this paint scheme, in my opinion, originally when I saw this, I was not a massive fan of this paint scheme. And a lot of reasons why I wasn't a massive fan, I just didn't like the cyan and the pick mixing together. I've liked it a lot more than I originally did, to be honest with you. But this paint scheme definitely does have a lot of things that could definitely be fixed with it for sure. But still, it has been growing on me overall. It is my least favorite uh, throwback paint scheme we've seen so far this year. But we've seen a lot of really good throwback paint schemes, so the bar is really set high this year. But overall, this paint scheme isn't too bad, in my honest opinion. And hopefully, it will look better and grow on me a lot more. But there's definitely things that could be definitely better about this paint scheme overall, to be perfectly honest with you. 
Next paint scheme and sponsor news we're going to take a look at is Michael and S2021 Pie Flying Jane Skin that just announced a few minutes ago from Junior Motorsports that we are going to see here at Talladega Super Speedway. I actually like this paint scheme a lot. I mean, I've been a pretty big fan of usually the Pilot Flying James schemes that Michael and has run. I thought they look really, really pretty. This one, in my opinion, looks really, really, really cool. To be perfectly honest with you, I really like this paint scheme a lot, and I cannot wait to see it out of the racetrack at Talladega Super Speedway with Junior Motorsports. The next paint scheme news we're going to take a look at, and we're going to talk about Gray Galling, as we're also going to talk about Panini Alonso as well. As according to Adam Stern, Panini is running a USC paint scheme on Gray Galling's Camaro at Talladega this weekend to mark the launch of its new UFC training card product, PRFSN, or whatever the product that they're running. They're going to be launching a product, which this is really, really awesome, that UC is partnering up with NASCAR and the UFC is partnering up with Greg Galding as well. This is really, really good promotion as well, as NASCAR is a pretty big national series. I know it's the Xfinity series, but NASCAR has got a pretty good promotion as well. This is really, really cool, and I'm definitely really excited about this for sure. The next paint scheme is sponsor news we're going to take a look at is Corey LaJoy's 2021 Fox Nation scheme that we will see this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway. Definitely going to be a lot of controversy from this scheme, to be honest with you, but I have no problem that Fox Nation is going to be partnering up and sponsoring with NASCAR. I have no problem with it. I've got no problem with any controversial or political schemes. Want to sponsor with NASCAR. I think it's really cool that Fox Nation is partnering up with Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy is definitely a sponsor man. He picks up a lot of sponsors. And this paint scheme definitely looks really, really cool in my honest opinion. And the final paint scheme is sponsor news we're going to talk about is Quinn House 2021 Permatech scheme that we will see in two races this year. We'll see it at Talladega and then at New Hampshire as well. It's the same paint scheme as last year. I like the Permatech scheme last year. This year is basically the same as last year's Permatech scheme. But it's really, really cool in my opinion. And I am definitely excited to see that paint scheme out there for sure. And now we're going to go ahead and finally jump onto all the other stories that we need to discuss on today's episode. Let's go ahead and talk about fans and attendance. Let's start off with Dover Speedway. As it was announced yesterday from Dover Speedway do yesterday afternoon, that Dover Speedway has announced fans for the weekend of May 14th to the 16th. It will be limited capacities and fans will be reassigned for that upcoming race. Again, I don't know the number of fans that are going to be live for Dover Speedway. I would assume it's going to be around 20 to 20, probably like 25 to 30 percent. I think Delaware has been a little more stricter when it comes to their COVID-19. I mean, Dover just uh, yesterday, like I said, they finally were able to get fans. They've been kind of waiting on it. There was a lot of controversy around if Dover was even going to have fans or not. We now have official confirmation that Dover Speedway is going to have fans which is really, really awesome to see. The next track and fan announcement we're going to talk about, well, not 100% confirmation on fans, but we're going to talk about Circuit Americas. As yesterday, we had the announcement from basically that Twitter was going to become the official pace car and that they were announcing talent sponsor. During the press conference, Marcus Smith brought up, and he says that they will have social distancing policies in effect for Circuit Americas, believes that they still contaminate a crowd of 40,000 to 50,000 fans. With the size of Surrogate Americas, which is around a three-mile track, definitely you can def for sure accommodate enough fans for that event. 40,000, 50,000 fans would definitely be one of the largest crowds we have seen for an event. It's really, really awesome that they're going to have a lot of fans for that event as well. I know there have potential talks that there could have been full capacity for that Surrogate Americas race, but with not enough people vaccinated, NASCAR not one because Texas is a fully open state. If NASCAR is not 100% confident that they're going to be able to get the green light to go to have full capacity, NASCAR, I think, in the coming months will have full capacity at some upcoming races. But the fact that they're starting to get more fans at these upcoming races is really, really awesome. The numbers are continuing to increase. I mean, Poconos, they're getting up to 50%. I think sooner or later, things will officially get back to normal. This is really, really exciting news that at least 40,000 to 50,000 fans are going to, they might increase as, as more people get vaccines. That number might end up increasing to larger numbers. Because remember, like I said, Texas is fully open, but certainly Americans are trying to be safe. I have no disrespect to them for that. I think it's really, really good that they're playing with the safe factor. Yes, I would like everything to be fully open in my house, fame, but you got to play in the safety factor as well. But yeah, about 40,000 to 50,000 fans are expected to be able to go to that race for sure. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we are going to go ahead and talk about the Richmond TV ratings from this past weekend. 
According to Adam Stern, Fox earned a 2.0 rating and 3.315 million viewers for the Toy Owners 400, which is up from a 1.73 rating and 2.787 million viewers for the 2019 race, though that was on a Saturday night and it's flat from 2018. I'm going to tell you right now that this is a massive, massive win for NASCAR. Considering they had the IndyCar season opener with Jimmy Johnson racing, the IndyCar race only got like 900,000 viewers for the start of the race, which means NASCAR is going to win, and it's never on motorsports in America. So even if you have Jimmy Johnson, a powerhouse in NASCAR, you're still going to have more people that are going to tune into the Cup Series race than the IndyCar race. It really, I'll be honest with you too, I really have no clue why IndyCar and NASCAR tried to basically go against one another. I think that IndyCar should have been either after or early in the day, way before that. And they should have done, maybe have like F1, the IndyCar, and then NASCAR take place. Because again, NASCAR does have license. That's probably what they should have done. IndyCar made a wrong decision. But as for NASCAR, we've had a lot of races here of rain delays. We had a race that had no rain issues. And we were up. This is really one of the first times early this year where ratings have been up. That's really good to see. At least the ratings are definitely heading in the right direction. Hopefully that means for the rest we get farther in the year. Ratings will continue to go in the right direction. And hopefully by the end of the year we will be up year by year. I just think that by the end of the year we'll probably have playoff issues where we'll probably start losing some ratings. But in regards to that, it's really good that the ratings are definitely up for the Richmond race. And good news overall for sure. And now we're going to go ahead and jump onto the first of two major stories of today's episode. As we're going to go ahead and talk about Corey Haim. As according to Jerry Jordan from KickingTires.com, he was told by someone, a representative from Cabo Center Sports, that Corey Haim is going to be making his official NASCAR Truck Series debut and his first NASCAR National Series debut at Darlington Raceway, driving the number 51 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. This is really, really exciting. Corey Haim, for those you don't know, is a driver that currently races in the ARCA Series. He has two career ARCA wins, winning the final race at Kansas Speedway and winning the season opener for Venturini Motorsports at Daytona and currently is the points leader in the ARCA Menards Remax Racing Series. To me, this is a really, really awesome opportunity for Corey Haim. This guy has been really, really killing it so far in the ARCA Series. He has a lot of talent. He's been doing very well so far this year. I think he's the only one that really has is going to be any sort of competition this year for Ty Gibbs this year because we know it's good Ty Gibbs is. He's the only one that really is going to be good competition because, again, he's got Venturi Motorsports equipment, but he's a very, very talented up-and-coming driver as well. I think ultimately for the goal for Corey Haim's this year is going to be no practice qualifying for that event. I think his goal overall is to try to at least potentially contend with them. I would say that his goal is to try to finish in the top 10 or top 15. I know that's really high expectations for a driver making his debut, but you are in Kyle Busch Motorsports equipment, and you want to really make a good first impression, especially since if you do well enough, Kyle might consider you running full-time in your ride. I mean, there are plenty of drivers that are going to be attempting to race this year for that organization, but this is definitely a really awesome opportunity for sure for Corey Haim. I hope he does very, very well, and he gets a very excellent run and runs up front, and hopefully maybe he leads laps and puts together a really impressive run and opens eye for Kyle Busch to maybe potentially, especially with the potential John Mitchell Mitchell could be going to the Cup here in the next couple of years, maybe open a ride for him to go to Kyle Busch Motorsports in the foreseeable future. And now we're going to go ahead and jump onto the final story of today's episode as we are going to be going ahead and talking about Jennifer Jo Cobb. As originally this past last week, we talked about Jennifer Jo Cobb was expected to make her NASCAR Cup Series debut at um, Talladega Super Speedway. Well, yesterday it was announced around 4 or 5 that she has not been approved to race her, her make her NASCAR Cup Series debut at Talladega Super Speedway. Now, this was reported by uh, Bob Pockers, and the reason, according to Bob Pockers, the reason is is based on performance and quality and is apparently not a result of Richmond. A lot of people like myself originally thought that this was a role of the Richmond incidents where she had an issue with Norm Benning and also was involved in a couple other incidents as well throughout the race. Apparently, they made this decision way before they basically made a decision right a day or two, apparently the middle of the week last week, they made the decision for her not to make her NASCAR Cup Series debut. And here is also a response from Rick Ware Racing, and here is the statement that Rick Ware Racing brought up when this was announced. We've been informed by the sanctioning body that Jennifer is not approved to compete in the NASCAR Cup Series event at Talladega this coming weekend. This is an unfortunate situation, but as a team, we support NASCAR's decision to uphold the sanctioning body's rules and regulations. 
Now, here's what's very important. Who is going to drive the number 15 car for Rick Ware Racing? Well, according to the reports from Bob Pockers earlier today, J.J. Ely is expected to drive the 15 car. He's been with Rick Ware Racing for the last couple years, so I expect him to be the driver that will be driving the 15 car at Talladega Super Speedway. Now, there's a lot of controversy around this, and there's a lot of problems I have with the situation. I was not very happy when NASCAR made a decision to not let Jennifer Joe Cobb make her NASCAR Cup Series debut at Talladega Super Speedway. I understand the NASCAR is afraid of, because there is no practice of qualifying. I do understand the NASCAR is looking at potential. She could become a hazard on the racetrack. But I don't think Jennifer Joe Cobb is a hazard. Yes, she only has 11 lead lap finishes in a combined 248 starts. But guess where a majority of her lead lap finishes come? They come, guess where, at Super Speedway tracks. Guess where only top 10 comes from? A super speedway track. Yes, she's had multiple incidents like 2018 crashing at the checker flag, you know, on the last lap when he got across the line when he had that incident where he had a big wreck on the last lap with Noah Grayson getting turned by Timothy Peters. Again, not really 100% Timothy Peters' fault, but you had that incident right there in 2018 and she crashed coming to the line and you could have that incident happen. But let's talk about something else too. Derek Cope who, yes, of course, was a Daytona 500 champion, two-time NASCAR Cup Series winner. He was approved. The last time Derek Cope raced a NASCAR Cup Series car was 2018 in the Southern 500. So he's not raced in three years. And I'm no offense to Derek Cope, and I'm not trying to hate on Derek Cope, but Derek Cope was not very fast in the race. He almost caused a big one in duels, had a wreck in the practice the day or two before when they were doing the practice sessions, and crashed on lap three of the Daytona 500, of course, with his sister and Bubba Walls. But he had contact with Bubba Walls and crashed out on the third lap of Daytona 500, finishing last. And he got approval to run for NASCAR. Yes, of course, he did have, of course, a won the Daytona 500. And I definitely think he's confident enough. But he should not have been out on the racetrack if we're going to talk about that. Another driver is Bill Lester. Bill Lester had not raced in a NASCAR car since 2007, and he made his truck series return. Did not look bad, in my opinion, for guys not racing series. He finished, like, think, think three or four laps down. But again, he got out of leader's way, did what he's supposed to do, was very respectful out on the racetrack. And let me just say, there are drivers right now, in my opinion, that are in the Cup Series field that are that have less experience, that deserve, have way less of criteria to get into Cup Series events than she has. Quinn Half is a perfect example. Quinn Half had 10 NASCAR Xfinity Series starts before he got to make his NASCAR Cup Series debut, and he got to. Now, what I'm hoping is, is this is like a James Davison situation last year. James Davison was supposed to make his NASCAR Cup Series debut last year at Talladega Super Speedway, but NASCAR did not approve, and he got to make his debut at Pocono. What I'm hoping from this whole situation is that Jennifer Jo Cobb is able to make her NASCAR Cup Series debut later this year, at like Kansas or like an upcoming short track or something. Because I hope that NASCAR is just basically saying, oh, she can't make her debut. If NASCAR is saying she can't make her debut at Talladega, and that that's what the situation is, they should have been more clear enough. Another thing is, if this decision was made last week, you should have informed the team when they made a decision to do this. You should have informed the team right away and not waited until this week. Why did you wait until late in the until early this week to tell them? Because everyone's going to assume, one, that this is from the Richmond incident, which had nothing to do with Richmond. NASCAR has got to be more clear and more transparent with the fans and bring up and make sure that things are not confusing because this is a very confusing situation. And in my opinion, I feel like NASCAR dropped the ball on the situation and they should have been more clarifying and more clear on what was the right situation. And in my opinion, she should have been allowed to do her debut. Was she going to do anything in the cup race? Probably not, but I don't think she was going to be real like NASCAR thought it was going to be. But that's just my opinion on the situation. So, Anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notification on so you get notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Links are below for that, and combo your thoughts on today's video. What are your thoughts about this Jennifer Joe Cobb situation? Do you feel like NASCAR did her dirty, or do you think NASCAR overall did the right thing in the situation? Let me know in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about Corey High making his NASCAR Truck Series debut at Darlington? How well do you think he's going to do in his debut? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do like so YouTube can recommend more of these great videos out to you guys. If you do that, I would greatly and truly appreciate it. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.